I want to get back to some of that in a moment, but it occurs to me that we ought to talk a little bit about Russia because we hear a lot about Russia in the news today. From a geopolitical perspective, we hear that we have a president who is an agent of Russia. But there's also these kinds of conspiracy theories that are true with respect to dispensational eschatology, that Russia is a nation from the north that's poised to invade Israel in the end times. Where does that come from? (laughs) It comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39. And chapter 38 begins, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, coming to Ezekiel, Son of man, get your face towards Gog, the land of Magog. And some translations have the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. And then chapter 39, verse 1 pretty much says that same thing again. Now, the question is, should it be translated as the Prince of Rosh or the Chief Prince of Meshach? So that's where this comes down to. And they take the word Rosh, which is used about 600 times in the Old Testament, and it means chief or highest. Or head. Uh, In fact, or head, yes, exactly. We We know of Rosh Hashanah, which is the highest holy day in the Jewish calendar. And if you look at any time Benjamin Netanyahu is speaking, you will see a podium. And if you can read Hebrew, you will see that the word Rosh is there. And it is because he is the chief guy. He's the head of the government of Israel. So Rosh means head or chief. It doesn't mean Russia. And so for the longest time... But Gary, it does uh, sound like Russia. Yeah, the thing... (laughs) It does. The thing of it is, I went... And you take the Hebrew letters of Rosh, and then you take the actual Hebrew word Russia. And the only letter that's common between the two of them is the Hebrew letter Resh, the first letter. They don't look anything alike other than that. So this has nothing to do with modern-day Russia. And again, I think most scholars today have finally, finally gotten away from this idea and uh, you know, describe it as you know very fanciful you know exegesis and using the sound of a word to actually turn the entire you know prophecy of Ezekiel thirty eight and thirty nine on its head. Yeah, and of course, Russia is an eleventh century Viking word, and as such, should not be semantically linked to the Hebrew word Rosh. Let's move on from that. Great point, as you just made it. And hey, I hey, think hey, let me bring up one sure. other point. I did a really big study on all this, but there's something very interesting. If you look at Ezekiel 38, 13, and it says, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all its villages will say to you, have you come to capture spoil? Have you assembled your company to seize plunder, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to capture great spoil? And those who project this into the distant future, says, well, this had to do with oil or it had to do with potash and all that kind of thing. What I found, if you look at Ezra chapter 1, verse 4, those four items are mentioned when the Israelites came back from the captivity. Those are the same four items that they brought back with them, almost word for word. And so I believe that Ezekiel 38 and 39 has nothing to do with the end times but had something to do with the return of the captivity that the Jews were in, and they brought these things back. And if you read the book of Esther, you will see some of these same types of ideas through it. And I I wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Gog and Magog End Time Alliance, which goes through Ezekiel 38 and 39 in a very specific way and points out the parallels between Ezekiel 38 and 39 in the book of Esther. So really, you have millions and millions of American Christians that are implicating an entire nation in this vast end times conspiracy theory. Yeah. Oh, yes. In Hal Lindsey's Late Great Planet Earth, there's a chapter in there by Lindsey where it says, Russia is a gog, and you're pointing to this. And so here you indict an entire nation that has nothing to do with modern day Israel, and then you've got China, too, you know, this 200-million-man army that's supposed to come in and march into Israel. And I'm thinking, what do they want in Israel? What does Israel have that they want? 
Well, according to Ezekiel 38, 13, they want silver and gold and cattle and goods. And Russia has much more gold than Israel does. And they want cattle. I mean, it just makes absolutely no sense. And it's this coming from a prophetic system that claims to interpret the Bible literally, where you have, if you again, you read this section of scripture, you've got horseback riding, bows and arrows, <laughs> chariots. And it's amazing what they do with that. They turn bows and arrows into missiles and missile launchers. And then you have chariots that end up being tanks and then horses, horses. Well, that's really horsepower. Uh, and so, again, from a system that claims to interpret the Bible literally, this is one section of Scripture that they completely mangle with an exegetical base not found in anything related to reality or literalism. 